and welcome to week 7 of this 52 week movie review challenge. This week, given today's Valentine's Day, I've watched Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day is a film by Gary Marshall. It's one of those rom-com films which has got like a whole bunch of different storylines that sort of seem to come together in the end and sort of intertwine and basically yeah, it's like watching seven to nine different rom-coms at the same time. Now, apparently, this is exactly what Love Actually is. I still haven't seen it. So, I guess my review isn't quite going to be as complete as it could be. I mean, it's got a whole bunch of different big-name actors that you've all heard of, like Julia Roberts, and Ashton Kutcher, and Jessica Alba, and Jennifer Lawrence, and Hathaway, Jamie Foxx. I could keep going, but I'm sort of the wheels are spinning at the moment. Oh, and of course it had Patrick Dempsey playing a doctor, because apparently that's all he can actually do. I'm not big on rom-coms. Like, I, I did still enjoy Moulin Rouge last week, because it was a nice, big, epic romance. Like, I, I mean, that's probably the best way to put that. But, it felt all over the place. I mean, like, I mean, at the end there are all sorts of intertwining things and all that sort of thing, and everything's all interconnected and interrelated, and on a day like Valentine's Day everything's important and special, and yeah, yeah, yeah. But, so, I don't, I personally, I thought some of the coincidences, coincidences felt a bit trite. I mean, there were some good ones, and there were some nice reveals, for example, with Julia Roberts' character towards the end, uh, Bradley Cooper's character as well. I did quite enjoy both of their individual conclusions, for want of a better word. And I mean, the whole point of a film like this is that you have the stories intertwine and you tell a story that has them all connected because it wouldn't work as well as a story where they weren't connected and you were just watching seven separate stories that didn't have any overlap at all. But I feel like the... O I don't know, I feel like the overlap was just sort of there for overlap's sake. I mean, take the, the main stories, at least, like Ashton Kutcher's sort of story side of things. The film opens with him proposing to his girlfriend, so I guess that's one of the ones they're setting up to be the main one. And the other being Jerifer Lawrence's teacher um, character, who's currently dating Patrick Dempsey, the Doctor. Um, and they just sort of... I knew how it was going to end. I saw how it was going, in, going to end as soon as I saw Patrick Dempsey's character walk into the florist. I, I just, at that point, I'm like, oh, it's going to be that, isn't it? It's going to be, yeah. I guess the main thing that I'm pulling from just making this review is that I have not remembered a single name of any of the characters at all. I think there were so many stories and so many different character arts to deal with that I didn't actually get the time to invest in any of them to actually want to see how they ended. I've got to be honest though, the one with Taylor Swift and I just, mm, that just, I mean, I guess that's how it is in that sort of environment, but my god, they shat me up the wall. Oh, but I mean, in that, there was a setup for, like there was a very obvious setup for some kind of conflict, and it never happened. It just, it never came. Like, it just, that's what I mean, there, were too, there was too much going on for everything to actually happen naturally, I guess? Which is, again, sort of leading into the whole trite, uh, heavily coincidental sort of feeling I got from it. Um, another thing is that I was actually more amused by most of the minor characters than any of the actual mainline character story arc bits. Um, apparently that's one of Gary Marshall's traits that you end up liking the minor characters, which, look, yes, I guess it's nice, but it would also be nice for, you know, the whole reason we're there to watch the film to actually be amusing as well. Look, I mean, it's not abysmal. It's not horrible, which everyone was really sort of telling me how absolutely bad it was when I was, when I'd announced that that was the next film I was going to watch. But by the same token, it's not that good, either. I'm going to give it three. Three out of seven. I just... 
it never really grabbed me. Uh, it's not something I need to go back and see again at all. That's all I really want to say about it. Thank you for watching this week's movie review. Next week, as part of a continuation of Romance Month, I'll be watching The Notebook. Feel free to leave any comments or conversation topics down in the comments box below. But until next time, tally ho.